Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is part three of, and they worshiped the dragon. How is Satan going to pull this off? All right, so I, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm on bit shoot. B-I-T, one word, second word, shoot, C-H-U-T-E, bitshoot.com. I'm also on minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, in case they shut down my YouTube channel, which I keep getting strikes and I keep getting my videos removed and censored because I guess the devil's children don't like what I'm trying to tell everybody and preach and teach, well, teach. Okay, I have to keep my Bible studies under 30 minutes, otherwise minds.com will not accept it. They changed the terms of service and didn't even notify me. Didn't find out until I tried to upload an hour's video. So I'm gonna try to keep making these things under 30 minutes. That's why I cut off on uh, where I did. All right, so let's go to Genesis chapter 1. God's getting ready to create Adam. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, the beginning. And we're going to start where we left off in uh, part 2. So this is part 3. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us... Now, when he said us, he's not talking about the angels. And we'll get more about this later. And God said, let us make man in our image, plural, after our likeness, and let them have dominion, that means rulership, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Remember that. God said, let us make man in our image. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Satan's uh, media says, don't have children. The earth is overpopulated. Uh, we're destroying the planet by having too many people. But God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That doesn't mean we should pollute the earth with all their filth and chemicals like they're doing, but I'm not in charge. Verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And I believe before the fall, I believe that Adam and Eve were vegetarians. Before the fall. But that's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, that's fine. No problem. Uh, what can I tell you? Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God, now listen carefully. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day day. Now, I believe that Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day. That's what I believe. I believe that's what the Bible teaches. I've heard some people say, well, you know, the, the all the two-legged creatures were created on the sixth day, and then on the seventh day, God rested, and then the eighth day, God created Adam and Eve. I I've heard people say that. I kind of get where they're coming from, but I just don't get it in the Bible. And I don't think it's a huge point of contention, but 
You know, if somebody wants to believe that and they believe on the Lord Jesus, that's fine. You know, let's face it. Uh, the disciples asked Jesus when he was going to come back, and he said he didn't know, and the angels in heaven didn't know, and only only the Father know, knew. So, you know, if there were th something that Jesus didn't know, you better believe there's going to be things that we don't know. That's all I can tell you. Now, in, in what's interesting is Peter, in verse, uh, let's see, hold on a second. In the book, second the book of Peter, the second book of Peter, chapter 3 and verse 8, and you're going to get people, when you start running around circles with these so-called churches, uh, you're going to meet people that will tell you Paul was, Paul was a fake apostle, he was a liar, and then you're going to get people that tell you that Second Peter uh, doesn't belong in the Bible because Peter didn't write Second Peter. Uh, personally, I think they're a bunch of liars, and they're of their father, the devil, but hey, what can I tell you? But in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, in Genesis 1, when it says, The evening and the morning were the first day, do I think it was a thousand years? I don't think so. I think it said the evening and the morning were the, you know, the first day. Or the evening and the morning were, you know, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. All right. Genesis 1 and 31. And God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So it tells you right there, evening and morning a day is a day, right? Now, there's going to be you're going to run into people that tell you that uh, the Trinity is a false doctrine, and I don't like the word Trinity because it's not a Bible word, but the word Godhead is. God said He made man in His image, and the Bible declares that man has one a body two, a soul, and three, a spirit. Body, soul, spirit. Three parts, one man. All right, so let's take a look at uh, what the Bible says about this. Acts 17, 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and by man's device. So the Bible talks about the Godhead. Romans 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You know, there's people run around trying to tell you that, you know, well, you know, I'm an atheist and everything came from into, you know, into being by random chance. I tell you what, people, if I were to, I don't know if you know what a grandfather clock is. No, when I was in Germany, I got to see a grandfather clock. They used to hand carve those things from wood. Uh, it must have taken them months and months to build a grandfather clock. I mean, those things kept time. I mean, you know, I mean, they, they, they took wood and they, they, they sanded it and, and, and painted it and cut the gears out of uh, wood. Later, they would use metal, but, you know, and then you would pull a chain and it would keep time. You know, the pendulum would swing and tick, tock, tick, tock, you know, or let's say a, a, an airplane. You know, if I showed somebody a grandfather clock or an airplane or a car or whatever and said, you know what, over millions and millions and millions of years, this thing came into being, they would look at me like, you know, they would laugh and call me a fool. You're going to tell me that car is from millions and millions of years just happened. 
I mean, let's face it, people. The human body is far, far more complex than a grandfather clock, a car, or an airplane. Now, let's face it. It is a self-replicating machine that brings forth life. And if you don't believe me, uh, get married, have a spouse of the opposite sex. I guess you got to bring, bring that to attention nowadays. And uh, chances are you'll have a kid. It's, it, DNA is self-replicating. I mean, I took biology in high school. I took it in college. And, you know, anybody that thinks that the human body is not more complex than a car or an airplane or a grandfather clock, they're, in, they're insane. All right, what can I tell you? It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in a creator. I mean, you know, but that's just me. What can I tell you? So Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Oh, yeah. They're without excuse. People deny the creation because they don't want to live by God's rules, which is fine. You don't want God's rules? No problem. He's got a place for people that feel that way. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You know what vain means? It means worthless. Deceit means to trick somebody with a lie. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Colossians 2.9 For in him, Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10 and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Hmm. So, let's see. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, spirit and soul and body. Did you catch that? And I pray, God, your whole spirit, one, and soul, two, and body, three. Hmm. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says God made man in his image, and the Bible says man has a body, soul, and spirit, three parts, one man. And then people will tell you, well, you know, the Trinity thing, that, that's a false doctrine, especially those Jehovah's Witnesses. They, they'll tell you that in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Isaiah. Chapter 10 and verse 18. Let's take a look at the Old Testament. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. Soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. So here, the Old Testament even says soul and body. Different. Micah 6 and verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Hmm. So, body, soul, different. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 10, set 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body. Spirit and body, not the same. Soul and body, not the same. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. First Thessalonians, 
Oh, uh, let's see. We read that already. Okay. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, uh, here it is, the priest uh, saw Hannah praying and thought she was drunk. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit, spirit, and I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. So your spirit and your soul are not the same. And your body is not the same. Job chapter 7 and 11. Job 7 11. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Okay. Isaiah 26, verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So, you know, when you get people that tell you, you know, eh, this Trinity stuff is... You know, it's fake. And, you know, let's face it. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's not that hard, people. All right, let's take a look. Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Usually when they're talking about the host of heaven, they're... Speaking about angels, not always, but, you know, maybe not always. I don't know. Maybe always. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. See, this is why I have a hard time believing on the eighth day God created more. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God rested as an example unto us. The Sabbath day, take a day off, rest your body, you know, and reflect upon the good things that the Lord has done for you on the Sabbath day. God didn't rest because he was tired, okay? I mean, really? people. I've heard people say that. Verse 3, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. What does it mean to sanctify something? It means to set it apart. When you have something that's holy, H-O-L-Y, you know, we're not talking about Swiss cheese here. You, you take it and you put it aside and separate the clean from the unclean. You know, that's what it means to be sanctified. You know, it's like when you do laundry, you, don't you separate the clean from the unclean? The gals get it, you know, and us guys that live you know, without mommy and a wife, you'll get it too. But that's what it means. You know, you separate the clean from the dirty. That's all it means. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Uh, now, I don't, I, personally, I, I think that's it. I, I think God made everything in six days, but that's just my opinion. I'm not saying, if anybody says that, you know, there was an eighth day creation, you know, I'm not going to say they're a heretic. I wouldn't dare say that because, you know, they might be right. I don't know. All right, so uh, what else are we doing here? Now, if you want to get a little bit ahead of, uh, of me, you could read Job chapter 38. Did you notice in the um, six days, seven days, in the six days of creation, and the seventh day of the Sabbath, the rest? It doesn't say, I don't believe it says that the angels were created on any day there. But if you read Job 38, it says that the morning stars, the sons of God, shouted for joy when the earth was created. Personally, 
I'm of the opinion that the angels were created prior to the earth. That they were, you know, they were the host of heaven. But you got to understand something. The Bible is the book of Adam. Adam. Adam and Eve and their descendants. It's not the book of angels. I mean, angels are mentioned. You know, it's real simple. If you, if you were telling me your family history, you know, one night you met me and you invited me for dinner or whatever, you know, and you might, you know, we'd come over to your house, whatever, and we're talking, you know, you might, you know, and we, we talked about stuff or whatever, and then, you know, you might, um, a year later, you might get some family over and said, yeah, you know, I got to meet that crazy Chaplain Bob guy. He's a real idiot, you know, but uh, that's what some people say. Anyways, um, now you might mention that, you might mention me in your family history, but you wouldn't, but I'm not part of your family of the physical sense, you know, it's just like Satan is mentioned in the Bible, but he's not, the Bible's not about Satan. But we're warned about him, and that's what this is all about. You know, so, you know, that's the thing. Satan and the angels, the Bible is not about them. The Bible is about Adam and Eve and their descendants. All right, verse 4, Genesis 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Uh, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now, personally, I think, and uh, when it said, let us make man in our image, I think that God made the spirit and the soul, what we just read. Now, I think that now, or maybe he made the soul. Maybe he only made the soul. That's Now he's getting ready to make the body. Verse 6, But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. And the Lord God breathed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So here it is. God formed his body from the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So I guess in the previous chapter we read, that was probably when God made their spirits and then made a body to put them in and then breathed the breath of life. Now, you know what's really interesting? The word wind and the word spirit in the Greek comes from the word pneuma. It uh, doesn't matter, if, you know, when you're talking wind or spirit, it, it's the same word. That's where you get the word for pneumatic air tools, you know, pneumatic tools, air tools. Uh, gals, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Ask, ask your husband, ask your boyfriend, ask your brother, ask your father. Uh, air tools are used when in wet environments where you don't want electricity running to, um, if you've ever have your tires changed uh, and you hear there, the, the tool that they put the tires on, that's, an, that's a pneumatic air tool. That's an air tool. So it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, formed his body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. This is the wind, the spirit. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. All right. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
Now, something we should point out. Remember it said that uh, God rested on, you know, on the sixth day God made everything and he says, and it was good. We just read that a couple, you know, a few minutes ago. Well, if God created all the angels before the earth, up to that point, when God rested on the seventh day, everything was good. God created Satan, well, Lucifer or whatever. He was good at that time. Let's face it. Matter of fact, let's take a look. Uh... All right, uh, let's see. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, everything. And behold, it was very good. It was very good. Obviously, Satan had not fallen as of yet. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right, so let's go to the next chapter. Verse 2 again, uh, chapter 2. Uh, let's see. Genesis 2 and verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's skip. 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So evidently, somewhere between the sixth day and now, something has changed. Uh, now there's a tree of good and evil. And we're going to go a lot more in depth on this in part four. I'm running out of time here. Uh, let's see. Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely eat die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And you know what, ladies? Let me tell you something. It wasn't good for man to be alone. You were supposed to be a helper to him, and he's supposed to help you. One of these days, I'm going to do a thing on a, a a wife's responsibilities to her husband. But I tell you what, the spirit of Jezebel is so strong, even among my own family, it's it's terrible. You know, it's, it's what can I tell you? All right, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to stop right here because it's almost 30 minutes. All right, well, we're going to go to part four. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.